this video, I will be showing you how to install OpenBSD using USB flash drive on AMD64 architecture. This video will also be useful if you are installing with a CD or floppy disk or on i386. As a reminder, AMD64 is the mainstream 64-bit architecture that is on most machines today, and i386 is 32-bit for old machines. That is the more popular ar architecture provided by Intel and AMD for both. Your first step is to go to www.opbsd.org and click download. You can also go directly to the page by going to www.openbsd.org slash ftp.html. There are three methods to getting the files. The first is with HTTP, the second is with FTP, and the third which is with rsync. rsync is for maintaining a copy of the files on your own server. You don't necessarily need it, and most people don't even want it. HTTP is uh, a way of getting files that only requires a web browser. On Linux, you can also use the wget command line utility. <coughs> FTP files can be gotten command line utility on Linux, and both can be gotten with the FTP terminal utility on OpenBSD using terminals synonymously with command line, though it is not necessarily and not in every context. Choose a mirror that is near to you. I live in the United States, so I will choose that mirror. Choose the version of the operating system that you want. Newer is better because it has patches, so there will be security updates. It's not very important for you to have a new system, but it's good practice to do it every once in a while, unless you don't like the direction that OpenBSD goes. Choose your architecture. In this tutorial, we'll be using AMD64, but i386 is the same. I will show you now. It has the same files. Other architectures may be very different or different to varying degrees, but these two are the best supported. You can also run i386 OpenBSD images to install on AMD64 architectures, 32-bit operating systems. <coughs> Download the SHA-256. Quickly. It has a way of checking to make sure that all of the sets and all of the files are installed properly. If you are on, uh, if you have a USB disk flash drive, download the install stick.fs. Install stick.iso is for CD. Floppy 60 is for floppies. And Mini Root is a more minimal version of the USB install. If you have a good internet connection or, uh, for the place that you're installing it to, but a bad one in the place where you're downloading it, then that would be a good idea. I have already 
downloaded these there. Install 60.ISO is install 60.ISO on my computer. Open BSD. FS is install 60.FS and SHA is SHA 256, where SHA is a shorter way of saying SHA to perform a checksum on your file you do SHA 256 sum and then the name of your file if it comes out to be the same this one to this one which it is then your file is downloaded correctly a checksum is an operation that makes a hash out of a file. A hash is a way of representing a file in a smaller or equal sized form, though not necessarily. It's a way of representing a file in its most general meaning, but in this specific meaning it converts the file into uh, representation of a fixed number of characters long and that way it will show you uh, if two files are the same because for every file that is the same it will produce the same output small changes in the file will have radical changes in the checksum. So even if uh, you only change a period to a comma, the entire checksum will be different and you will probably only find uh, somewhere between 2 and 10 characters that are different in the checksum. Sorry, the same in the checksum. If the first five or so are the same, it is usually the same all the way through. I say A9, B6, B to A9, B6, B, and it's the same. And it is. Well, now we've installed, or just downloaded all of the files properly. It's time to install. I will be using QEMU, which is an emulator. I recommend that you emu emulate OpenBSD before you try. I do not mean emulate in its purest sense. The correct terminology would be virtualize, but I use the word to appeal to a broader audience. Virtualize is much faster than emulate, which is the main difference, though it does not explain any of the mechanics behind it. QEMU is one virtualizer, though there are many. It is my favorite, so I will show you how to use this one. First, install QEMU, which I have already done, and it is different on each system. The, com the command for QEMU, quick emulator, is QEMU. Very simple. QEMU-image is one of those commands which will modify and create images for operating systems and other purposes. An image is a way of taking data from a whole disk, like a CD disk, compact disk, or a hard disk, hard drive, USB, they're all the same, because they can all hold the same data. 
to create one which we will put or install our operating system onto, we will use the create argument. An argument being any word after the command. After create, we put the name of the file that we want to put the disk information into. <coughs> I will call it OBSD dot image because it is short for OpenBSD, which is a good file name. Then you want the file size. Uh, G is for gigabytes, K is for kilobytes, M is for megabytes, and unprefixed, you may use bytes. Let it run, and it will create your hard drive. If you wish to uh, create it with a specific file system or with any other arguments, you may do so but it would be better for you to look at that on your own. I will tell you how to do things on your own in the next video. The way to run the, M the virtualizer is with the qemu-system and then dash your architecture, x8664 is a way of saying AMD64. Though you may replace it with whichever architecture you are using. Then you do the M flag. The uh, flags are arguments that start with a dash and then proceed a letter or dash dash and then a set of letters these change the operation of the program to whatever follows the dash m sets the memory size in this case 512 megabytes and to do it again we can do dash boot in a regularity because usually multi-character flags have a uh, two dashes before them rather than just one. This changes the boot menu. Menu equals on will tell it to turn on the menu. The flags on every command are completely different and they all take different arguments. HDA specifies the primary architect sorry the primary hard drive which will be uh, obsd.image which we created to house the uh, operating system though it is currently empty HDB specifies a secondary hard drive in this case we will be using the install 60.fs from my cursor forwards you do not need to include if you are installing it with CD instead you would do it like this as follows instead C D R O M and then the name of your file which is install 60.iso I will do both just to show how it will look. You can press escape for boot menu after the program starts up. I'll full screen it just so you can see better. You're in. It, this is what it looks like when it works. It is booted and you have selected 
uh, your install media. On any other system, this would be exactly the same as hitting escape or one of the F keys being F1 through F12, which depends upon which machine you use after it turns on. and then selecting your USB or CD device. In this tutorial we will be doing the plain install for which you do I. Uh, use the US keyboard layout because in some parts of the operating system you will be restricted to certain keyboard layouts because multiple locales have not yet been implemented in those parts. If you uh, do something wrong during any part of the installation, you can do Control C, which will stop it. If you want to go back in, you can do Install, and it will resume where you last left off. If you do not want to install, but instead restart, you can, instead of putting Install, put Reboot with an Enter at the end, as you would with Install. So let's just do the default keyboard layout, system host name. Uh, usually this would be the machine name dot and then the domain name. For example, if I own the domain uh, openbsd.org and this machine would be for, I don't know, let's say it's for making sandwiches. Yeah, I would put sandwich.openbsd.org. And that would be the name of my computer. The reason this is, is because it makes reverse DNS easier. If you do not have a domain name, don't do it. You won't break too many things if you put uh, just a one word domain name. So I'm going to do a tutorial just to show you that it's fine, just not recommended. Now this computer is called tutorial. You're going to get a bunch of interfaces. Wi-Fi? doesn't really work in the installer so you should pick an ethernet device because it makes eh, certain things easier in certain situations though you don't have to do it and you can install uh, OpenBSD perfectly if you just have uh, install 60 in inserted into your computer. You can do everything you could on the internet from there. But if you have a minimal image, you will need to connect to the internet. If you're asked to do an IP address, either input your static IP or just DHCP, which will find one for you. And most modern hardware likes that better. And I'm talking about routers. IP address, I don't have one, and I don't want one. Well, now we're done, and we could have been done immediately, but I decided to configure it anyway. Password for root account, I will make one. Uh, first thing, the more types of characters you use uh, is better. If I only use the numbers, my password will be fairly weak. If I only use letters, my password will be fairly weak, and it could be guessed easily by a computer. If it is made up of words, it could be guessed easily by a person. If you put characters in it, like, uh, I don't know, backslash, percentage sign, caret, then uh, your password
password will be much stronger. But if you only use characters, it could be guessed very quickly. So, use a combination. If you know a foreign language, uh, it's usually good practice to put those in, but you may have trouble putting them into OpenBSD since it only supports certain languages in certain places. So, uh, numbers, letters, and characters for now. My password in this will be secret because you should not share your password with anyone because then they will use it. You will be asked for it again. Please input it again exactly as you had before. This is to confirm that you typed it properly. I do not usually, so this is a surprise to me. If I did not, then it would prompt me again. SSHD by default. Unless you are going to use SSH, the answer is no. I may want to use this computer over the internet or for demonstration purposes. So, I would put yes. But I, uh, I would likely demonstrate on a different machine. It is better to have less things exposed to the internet so less people can get into your system. So I'm not going to start it by default. And unless you're running the X window system, you should not use it because it is big and slow and difficult to use. I will use it because I will need to demonstrate. XDM, it, it will provide you with a login screen at startup that will let you go into your uh, graphical desktop environment. I will say yes, because I expect most of you will want a graphical interface so that you can run your web browser. I'd recommend that you do because it's very very easy. If you don't then you'll just log in by typing in your username and password without a graphical prompt. It'll be text and it'll be the same. You just won't have any fancy windows to use. Uh, the first part of the tutorial will be almost completely using plain old terminal commands no fancy windows. Uh, if you have a serial console, which you likely do not, then you may use yes, which will allow you to plug in your serial console to your computer and use it. I do not have one, and I do not have a port for one, so I will not use it. A user. Yes, you do. Uh, the OpenBSD install process is optimized, so you have to press the enter key as few times as possible. So this is not a yes-no question. If you want to set up a user whose name is yes or no, you will have to do it later. Uh, I will call my user tutorials because that is the name of the channel then I will want a full name so I will put in my full name uh, and then a password and put it twice like before secure as well it would be better if it was different but if you have a bad memory it is more important that you remember your password than to have it be secure. Because the goal here is to have only you to be able to use your computer. If you are charitable, set up a guest account so no one can go prodding through your files. Changing things. <coughs>
time zone. Choose your time zone. Question mark for list. It will show you. Uh, let's do America because I live in America. And sub time zone. Uh, I'm in New York. You can just do America slash New York to make it quicker if you do live on the East Coast, which most OpenBSD users do. Available disks. Which one will be the root disk? You do want to put a question mark here to examine. Let's see. I do distinctly remember making the OpenBSD install disk 69 gigabytes. So, I will use that one. Uh, type in the disk name, press enter, and you get to it. I didn't format it, so let's do it. Uh, let's do whole disk because it is very difficult to run OpenBSD under multiple operating systems, and I wouldn't recommend it because OpenBSD usually has everything you need. If it doesn't, you can usually install it. So let's do a whole and have it completely erase the disk and put an MBR partition in there instead. Let's do it automatically so that it will decide for me how it will do it. As I said, this will completely erase the whole disk. Uh, this is the part that actually erases the whole disk. You can say, uh, uh, the, the, the previous command will only happen in certain cases. Sorry, no, the previous prompt where it will ask you what partition table, MBR, GPT, or edit you would like will only happen if it cannot detect a partition table, which is usually broken hard drives and hard drives that are clear. I started mine out clear, so that is why. You will not usually get that prompt. Uh, the automatic is the thing that overwrites the files. This takes a while because it goes through your disk, setting things up, making them exactly how they should be, being according to the table on the screen right now. Let me walk you through what all the things are for. Slash, which is the first line after the pound under the auto allocated layout. It should be a colon. The size, which is very small. It's only for storing other directories, and it will show a slash. This holds all your other directories. Temp is temporary. Sometimes it's in RAM, sometimes it's on disk and it only holds files for a small amount of time and will completely clear on reboot. Ver and user are for files to do with your operating system and home is where all of your user stuff will go. I am done doing stuff with my disks WD1 is just the disk that I use to install, the USB, the big one. I'm good, so I'll hit done and be done. Let's install the sets. That's the actual installation part of the operating system. We haven't really done anything except for set it up for installation at this point. Let's see. I have a couple of things here. Location of the sets. CD0 is if you are installing from a CD, you should press enter there if you are. Disk if you're doing a disk, like a USB disk. And HTTP if you are installing from the internet, like if you use a minimal install. Make sure you're plugged into the ethernet and you've already configured it. Uh, we're going to use disk in this example. But you may definitely use CD0 if you have a CD plugged in. 
is the partition already mounted? Uh, no, it technically is because we already have the drive mounted, but we don't have the specific partition mounted. It is going to be in WD1. Partition A, the only one that's useful, MS-DOS, in this case, is for booting the disk to make sure that it knows how to boot it, the computer. Uh, path name, it's the right one, by default. Which ones do you want to install? Yep, you want those. You don't have to install the X sets, being the one that start with X, if you don't want to install X11, which is graphical stuff. If you said no to starting an X server by default or including X stuff, then you want to say no to those there. Uh, you would deselect sets by pressing a minus, then the file, as it says in the instructions. You want to continue without verification because you did not have any uh, problems with verifying from the outgo or from the get go. So yeah, we're we're good. We already know that all of the files downloaded properly, and there are no errors. <coughs> A bank or something. There they go. I will pause my recording and resume when it's done. Ha! Ah, we have indeed make uh, made some progress. Well, we're done. We've already got everything installed, so we're going to hit enter and be done with it. It's going to finish our installation. Woohoo! Now, you want to type reboot at the prompt. Everything else is for the next video.